Let's see how external lenses work with the smartphone pinhole. We're going to first put on the uh, fisheye that you can see right here. That's just a little clip-on fisheye I got, maybe five, ten bucks online. And uh, I've got this telephoto lens that was a gift. Uh, it's like a 5X telephoto. Um, and then I've got a macro. And I have no idea what its magnification factor is supposed to be. And what we're going to do is just take a look at this little camera keychain I have here on this fake plastic hand I'm holding it in so that you don't have to keep seeing all my gritty cuticles. And you can see it's got the pinhole on it already, so we can see pretty much everything in the foreground and the background. Um, everything. <laughs> and now we're going to put the fisheye over our smartphone phone pinhole. We're going to put it basically just right up and over the lens, which is just how these clip-on lenses work. Uh, you can see this one's pretty scratched up. Uh, it's not the best quality, which is great for testing, because if we can get a good result with this, then you, you know a nicer one will result in a better result in a theoretical and likely world. So there we go. Here's what it looks like to look through a pinhole smartphone through a fisheye at the world. And we are doing the camera again compared to last time. It's different. I'm actually tapping it on the fisheye right now. It is coming into contact with the fisheye, the little camera. That's how close we can get. That's pretty cool. All right, let's take the fisheye off and put it back on the little banister here. Let's move to the telephoto. Let's move to the macro. Uh, we're going to put this little clip on macro on the smartphone pinhole camera now. And, uh, Ordinarily, this lets you get pretty close to subjects so that they're, you know, almost touching the lens, but it is a very narrow focus slice, typically, meaning you'll just have one point on the thing in focus and everything else will be out of focus. With the pinhole, uh, it's looking pretty good. I don't actually know if there's a measurable benefit to this using a macro with the pinhole, but there might be. I definitely see a lot of the, the little junk nicks that I've got on this lens over the years, which you normally don't see when you're just using it without a pinhole. So that's something. Put that over here. And uh, let's try the, the telephoto. The telephoto is like a, it's a 5X and, uh, you know, five times bigger. Maybe it's actually 10X possibly. And it clips on. It's got the ability to, to focus. There's actually a dial there. You can set the focus. It works. You know, it's surprisingly good for the price that they charged. It's just not easy to get it perfectly aligned with the camera. And I'm sure there's various, you know, manufacturing variabilities between each of these clip-on telephoto lenses. Uh, here's the camera with the hand, trying to get it about the same distance. And uh, yeah, there it is through the telephoto. We got the pinhole telephoto going now. Let's see what else we can look at. So that's the Coronado Bridge. And what I'm noticing with the pinhole and the telephoto is you really see all the junk that's in the recesses of this lens. You know, I didn't take great care of it. I put it in my backpack. That's definitely not a good choice if you want to keep it pristine. So that's unique. And uh, what, what, let's take a look at what all these would look like without the pinhole. So I just took the pinhole off and now you can see here's the hand again. I'm going to bring in the camera. This is just standard smartphone, no pinhole. This is what normal focus is. Uh, let's put the fisheye back on and see what it looks like. This is again, no pinhole with fisheye. Here's a side by side with wide shots. You know, pinholes don't always look great, but with the fisheye, it doesn't look too bad. Let's see what else. Put the macro on and frame up the photo again. Here's the hand with the macro, no pinhole. So that's what I was talking about, how just one part of the camera, the camera keychain, can be in focus at any given time with this macro, which is so different from a pinhole. With the pinhole, as you can see on the right, you get more overall apparent detail with less sharpness in any one particular zone. That's kind of the deal with pinholes. It's uniformly unsharp. So let's take this back, put it away. Take the macro off the non-pinhole smartphone, and let's add the telephoto to the non-pinhole smartphone. Uh, we get to clip it on just like before, and here's the Coronado Bridge, downtown San Diego's crown jewel of bridgery. Those are cars moving along the bridge. 
we're looking at, you know, maybe half a mile away, maybe a mile away, actually. You know what? I'm going to say two miles away. This is a pretty good telephoto lens relative to not having it and needing to see farther. Here is what we showed last time, but this is the telephoto version of the hand compared to the pinhole version, which is on the right of the hand. They're, they're pretty different photos. The, the telephoto really couldn't focus at all on anything that was less than 10 feet away. So it's not the ideal candidate to, to shoot close-ups. But uh, hey, that worked with the pinhole pretty well, which is a nice thing. And that was the roundup of do pinholes and smartphone external lenses cooperate? It's up to you to decide if there is a definitive answer in this video. I hope you had a good time.